You keep doing this year after year. You take more insulin or drugs that stimulate insulin. You cram it back into your body. And so what happens after 10, 15, 20 years? Well, your whole body just starts to rot. And that's what happens. Your eyes go, you go blind. Your kidneys go, you go on dialysis. You have gangrene and diabetic foot ulcers. Every part of your body has too much sugar. 오늘 전 여러분들에게 굉장히 중요한 영상, 아니, 위대한 강연 영상 하나를 보여 드릴 겁니다. 이 영상은 2017년 제이슨 펑이라고 하는 의사가 한 학회에서 전문가들에게 강연했던 영상입니다. 이걸 보고 나면 우리가 인슐린 저항성을 이해하는 게왜 이렇게 중요한지 비만이나 당뇨를 치료할 때 간헐적 단식이나 탄수화물 조절 식단을 하는 게왜 필요한지에 대해서 알수 있게 됩니다. 오늘 저는 이 강연 영상을 쉽게 번역하고 편집해서 설명을 드리면서 보여드릴 겁니다. And so type 2 diabetes is a disease with two phases, right? So there's, uh, if you look at the time course of the blood glucose before the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, there's actually two phases. So there's a long, slow phase where the blood glucose rises very, very slowly. And that's where the insulin resistance is rising, okay? But the body produces enough insulin to overcome this resistance. So the blood glucose stays relatively normal. It's compensated, right? So it's called a compensatory hyperinsulinemia. At some point, the, the pancreas doesn't produce sufficient insulin. Either the insulin resistance is too high or the, the amount of insulin drops. So because you lose this compensation, the blood glucose goes up and type 2 diabetes is diagnosed. But that's relatively... 이 데이터는 영국에서 있었던 화이톨 연구, 두 번째 연구에서 나온 데이터를 바탕으로 나온 그래프입니다. 화이톨 연구는 영국에서 당시에 공무원들 대상으로 오랫동안 그들의 생활 습관과 질병이나 질병 문제들을 상관성을 비교했던 연구입니다. 당시에 당뇨에 진단받은 사람들의 이전 13년 동안의 공복 혈당 데이터를 보니까 흥미로운 트렌드가 발견되었습니다. 당뇨란 질병을 진단받기 이전에 되게 오랜 시간 동안 이미 공복 혈당이 천천히 오르고 있었던 거죠. 그리고 마지막 1, 2년 사이에 그 문제가 급하게 통제되지 않은 수준이 올라갔습니다. 혹시나 지금 혈당이 조금 높게 나오거나 당뇨 위험이 있다고 진단 받았을 경우에 여러분들 또는 주변에 그런 사람이 있을 경우에는 절대 안심하면 안 된다는 겁니다. 지금 습관을 바꾸지 않으면 어느 날 갑자기 망가지고 몸이 당뇨로 넘어갈 거란 겁니다. 이어서 제인스 펑은 당시에 전문가들이 인슐린 저항성을 설명하는 방식에 문제가 있다는 것을 지적합니다. And this is the way we think about type 2, about insulin resistance. It's this lock and key paradigm that insulin acts like a key on the cell. So this is, for example, a liver cell. So you have receptors, which is like a lock. When insulin is produced, it opens the gate and it lets all the glucose in. Something is gumming up the system, so all the glucose stays outside and the cell faces this state of quote unquote internal starvation, right? Because it can't go in. 인슐린이 세포의 열쇠처럼 기능을 해서 세포의 문을 열어서 에너지가 들어갈 수 있게 해 주는 거였는데 인슐린 저항성이 생겼다. 이런 문제 상황에서는 이 기능에 문제가 생겨서 밖에 있는 에너지가 세포 안으로 제대로 못 들어가고 있다. 그래서 세포 안에 에너지가 부족한 상황이다. 이런 식으로 설명이 있었습니다. 이것을 문제가 있다라고 지적해요. 그 단서를 보여 드립니다. Okay, so insulin, it pushes the glucose into the cell. And if you're insulin resistant, it doesn't do that. So, okay, that's great. But the other thing this liver cell is supposed to do is turn on production of new fat. So if you're insulin resistant, you can't produce any new fat. So like that untreated type 1 diabetes, you waste away. But that's not the case in type 2 diabetes. If the glucose is not going into the cell, how is this cell producing tons and tons and tons of fat? Because we know that the type 2 diabetes, the insulin resistant patient, has a lot of insulin resistance, has a lot of fatty liver. 당뇨라고 하는 질병은 우리의 몸이 탄수화물을 제대로 처리하지 못하게 된 상태입니다. 이게 크게 1형 당뇨와 2형 당뇨로 구분되는데 지금 이야기하고 있는 것은 2형 당뇨예요. 2형 당뇨 환자의 경우 많은 사람들이 비만이 같이 일어나고 간에 지방이 껴 있고 간에서 지방이 많이 만들어지는데 만약에 기존의 인슐린 저항성 패러다임대로 인슐린 저항성이 높은 상태에서 
세포 안으로 에너지가 잘못 들어가는 게 문제라면 어떻게 간세포에서 지방이 많이 만들어지냐는 거예요. 간세포에서 지방이 많이 만들어지려면 간세포 안으로 지방이나 포당이 들어가야 하니까요. 그리고 제이슨 펑은 이 문제를 이해할 때 지방간이라는 개념을 제대로 바라봐야 한다고 이야기합니다. 보실게요. But it's this fatty liver that's the key to understanding insulin resistance. Because if you have a huge fatty liver, that same dose of insulin is not going to be able to shove any more fat into this fatty liver. Just like this. Your cell is like a train, right? And it's got passengers, and normally they go in. Insulin opens the door, stuff goes in. But what happens if that cell is already filled, right? If it's already filled with glucose and fat, that liver cell, you keep shoving it in with insulin, that's not the solution, right? Because you have the wrong paradigm. You think that the, the train is not opening the door, so you hire these, these guys to keep shoving people in. They do this in Japan. Um, because So the key to understanding type 2 diabetes is it's all about the fatty liver. As Mark just talked about, right? The cell, the liver cell is just packed with fat. So you can't shove any more in. That's the whole point. In the meantime, the liver is busy trying to decompress itself of all this fat, right? So what it does, so it's making all this new fat through de novo lipogenesis, and it packages it through triglycerides in the blood, right? And it's pouring out this triglycerides. 비만과 당뇨를 다룰 때 여러분들이 머릿속에 넣어야 되는 것은 지금 여러분들의 간이 정상 상태가 아니라는 겁니다. 간에 글리코겐과 지방이 굉장히 많이 쌓여 있는데 이 상태가 어떤 정체를 만들어내고 있어요. 비만이 있던 당뇨가 있던 지금 간에 글리코겐과 지방이 가득 차 있던 이 상황에서 이 간은 계속해서 지방을 합성하고 있고 그리고 중성지방 형태로 지방을 계속해서 내보내고 있습니다. 이 문제를 똑바로 봐야 한다는 거예요. 그리고 제니슨 펑은 현대인에게서 이 지방간을 만드는 대표적인 행동에 대해서 이야기합니다. 지방간의 원인이에요. When you overfeed carbohydrates, glucose and fructose, you get fatty liver and that's how you get insulin resistance. So if you eat a lot of fattening carbohydrates on the left, you can stimulate insulin. Right? And that will lead to obesity, but high insulin levels over a long period of time are also going to stimulate fatty liver, right? As you produce this new fat through de novo lipogenesis, which is going to lead to insulin resistance, which is then going to lead to high insulin levels again. 그리고 이어서 설탕에 대해서도 경고합니다. And it doesn't raise your insulin levels. So people said, ah, great, fruit sugar, right? It's great. It's not great. The problem with fructose is the way it's metabolized in the body. It's metabolized solely in the liver. Well, the liver could turn it into glucose, but you got lots of glucose. So it turns it into fat. So the fructose goes into the liver and gets turned directly into fat. The glucose and the fructose are not equally bad for you. The fructose is like 20 times as bad as the glucose. So glucose plus fructose is what gives you fatty liver, which gives you the insulin resistance. And what's glucose and fructose, right? It's sugar. So the idea, the way you need to think about type 2 diabetes is basically like a sugar bowl. Your body is like a sugar bowl, right? It can hold a certain amount of sugar. But once it's completely full, as you eat the sugar, it just spills out into the blood. Remember, sugar, we're talking glucose and fructose. It spills out into the blood, right? And so if you have type 2 diabetes, somebody says, well, you have type 2 diabetes now. Let me give you insulin. Because we think that you're the, the, the sugar can't get into the cells, right? So we need to give you insulin. So what does that insulin do? Well, it doesn't get rid of the sugar in the blood. What it does is it takes that sugar in your blood and crams it back into your body, right? And then the next time you eat, that sugar bowl is still full. So you take more insulin, and then you cram it back into your body again. And your body takes it for a while, sends that sugar out into the eyes, into the kidneys. It turns a lot of that into fat, right? And you haven't fixed the problem. You keep doing this year after year. You take more insulin or drugs that stimulate insulin. You cram it back into your body. 
And so what happens after 10, 15, 20 years? Well, your whole body just starts to rot. And that's what happens. Your eyes go, you go blind. Your kidneys go, you go on dialysis. You have gangrene and diabetic foot ulcers. Every part of your body has too much sugar. That's it, that's it. That's the whole pathophysiology. And what we've done is we've completely misunderstood the disease. If insulin resistance is really an overflow paradigm, then that treatment is completely, utterly wrong. Because you're taking that glucose from the outside and cramming it into the cell, which is now overfilled, has way too much glucose inside. And it's desperately trying to pump out this fat, right? 지금 제이슨 뽕이 말하는 건 이겁니다. 간이든 어떤 장기든 지금 당분이, 글리코겐이, 지방이 너무 많이 있다는 거예요. Overflow, 에너지가 넘쳐나고 있다는 상황인 겁니다. 그런데 우리가 지금 잘못된 관점으로 인슐린 정성을 이해하고 단순히 혈액 속에 있는 에너지가 못 들어가는 것을 문제로 생각하고 있다면 우린 지금 증상만 고치고 있는 거고 그렇기 때문에 우리가 10년, 20년 당뇨를 가지고 있게 되면 결국에는 모세혈관, 가느다란 혈관이 많은 장기부터 망가지는 거예요. 눈, 신장, 발 이런 것들이 썩는 겁니다. 지금도 당뇨 의사들은 이렇게 얘기합니다. 심지어 당뇨가 있는데도 불구하고 하루 세 끼를 꼬박꼬박 먹으라고 그리고 잡곡, 통고물을 중심으로 곡식을 먹으라고 합니다. 이 자체에 문제가 있는 겁니다. 제가 오래전에 이걸 연구하면서 당뇨 관련된 모임에 간 적이 있었어요. 그때 당뇨 전문가란 분이 이렇게 얘기했습니다. 여러분들 당뇨가 있어도 탄수화물은 꼭잘 드셔야 됩니다. 지방 섭취는 줄이고요. 그래서 제가 그때 왜 그래야 하냐고 물었는데 이렇게 답변하시더라고요. 당뇨가 있을 때는 운동을 열심히 해서 어떤 근육을 만들어야 되는데 운동을 하기 위해선 탄수화물이 필요하니까요. 웃기고 있는 거죠. So the good news is that you can actually reverse type 2 diabetes completely naturally as long as you understand this overflow paradigm. Because there's only two things you need to do. If your body has too much sugar, that's all type 2 diabetes is. Your body has too much sugar. Step one is don't put any more in. <laughs> right? It's a low carbohydrate diet. That's why it works so well. That's why study after study after study shows the low carbohydrate diet works to reverse type 2 diabetes. It's not that hard to understand because you're not putting sugar in to a situation where you have too much sugar. That's it. And what's step two? Step two is you burn it off. If you have too much sugar in the blood, don't put any more in and get rid of what you have inside. That's it. And that's intermittent fasting. So again, do we know it works? Well, of course we know it works. If you don't eat, your blood sugar drops, right? We know that. So what's wrong? What's wrong with that? Don't eat, blood sugar drops, don't take your insulin. 알고 있어요. 간호단식, 저탄수화물 식단, 특히 건강 전문가들이 굉장히 반대합니다. 이걸 유튜브에서도 쉽게 알수 있습니다. 의사분들의 경우에는 닥터 프렌즈, 그리고 트레이너분들의 경우에는 피플리. 이 각각에서 이 저탄수화물 고지방 식단 또는 간호단식에 대해서 이야기한 영상이 있습니다. 찾아보시면 쉽게 나올 거예요. 보시고 나면 전문가분들이 이 식단을 어떻게 생각하시는지 알수 있습니다. 그리고 다시 이걸 보세요. And we tell people this all the time, right? You have obesity or insulin resistance. Well, it's your fault, right? You ate too much uh, fat, right? You didn't exercise enough. You should eat less and move more. It's your fault. That's what we tell people all the time. But it wasn't. It was really the failure of the doctors, of the researchers to understand that type 2 diabetes is not about too much sugar in the blood. It's about too much sugar in our whole body, right? That's what you need to get rid of. You can't simply take the sugar in your blood and shove it in your body and pretend that you're better. It's like if you have garbage in your kitchen and instead of throwing it out, you throw it under the sink. Oh, great, my kitchen's nice and clean, right? And then when there's there's more garbage, you throw it into your bathroom, right? Hey, great, my kitchen's clean, right? Your doctor pats himself on the back. Oh, 
you know, your blood glucose is so good, your A1C is so good, right? But what's the problem? You haven't thrown out the garbage and your whole house just starts to smell, right? And then the doctor says, well, that's what happens, you know. It's chronic, it's irreversible, but it wasn't. We've proved it already. Why can't you accept that fact? You just have to know how to treat it. Just take your medications, right? No, that's not the case. This is a dietary disease. It demands a dietary solution. Face to the sea and my back to the land. I'm going to go to the city. 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 I'm going to go to the city.